watching Tell me who's watching Who's watching me Uh, I, uh, my name is Bob Turner, and I'm running for Congress against Angie Weiner. Uh, I like and admire uh, everything that uh, Mr. Desanti said, um, uh, except the part about running against Morty. Uh, but that kind of passion and, and that kind of belief is, is certainly what politics uh, uh, needs. Uh, uh, I'm hardly um, a, uh, a new guy. I'm an old guy, but I'm new to politics. This is the first time that, that I've run for anything. And it's not something that I even particularly wanted to do. But it was uh, a need that had to be uh, filled. And at, at this stage of the game in March, nobody was going to stand up and run against Mr. Weiner. Nobody was going to defy the uh, machine. From President Obama to Nancy Pelosi to Mr. Weiner. And through some odd circumstances where I simply asked, how could I help? Uh, I wound up as the uh, nominee in about 48 hours. Uh, some of the requirements for this job, uh, uh, I found, are, are uh, make it a, a little exclusive. Uh, I, I found that you, you can't really do this job and, and have a job. Most of the people that are running for office are attorneys. They're either working for the system or they're community organizers where they're getting paid to do what I'm doing. Uh, or they have some connection to this to support themselves. The, the people that I felt more qualified to do this uh, had uh, families. I mean, I have a big family, five kids, 11 grandkids. But I'm at a stage of life where, you know, I'm pretty much retired. And, and I actually can do this and cover senior centers in the morning and community groups in the afternoon and try and convince people that we got a problem here, we got to fix. Uh, another requirement was when they told me to run, they said, uh, you're not going to get any help from the Republican Party or the Conservative mm -hmm. Party. Uh, you're, uh, you're pretty much on your own. And uh, it's going to require you to kind of jumpstart this with, with you know, a contribution. Uh, I, okay, I'll do that. They didn't quite tell me how severe this was going to be. But I've been helped by contributors, small contributors, like you know, $10 to, to a couple of maxed out friends of mine that, that paid over what, two grand. But we've raised a, a, a war chest, uh, and we are mounting a credible campaign. We're seeing the billboards and the, uh, and the flyers. We have 361 volunteers as of uh, Friday, last time we counted. People who are out handing out uh, palm cards and standing in front of churches and uh, uh, ringing doorbells and subway stations because they know what, what, what I know and what I hope you know. This country is in serious trouble. We are being taxed to a point where we're choking <coughs> business and we're choking prosperity. You can tie the unemployment rate exactly to, to these tax uh, and spend programs. We have spent a trillion dollars on the stimulus bill. It did nothing more than help politicians get reelected. A trillion dollars. It's tough to imagine. But there are about 100 million taxpaying uh, families in this country. You just got a bill for 10 grand if you're one of them. That's how much a trillion is. We have a national debt of 14 trillion. Trillion. Now, you've heard that Chinese, we owe it all to them. We only owe them a trip. The rest of that money is in an IOU to Social Security and Medicare, which is coming due. It's no longer self-funded. It's now time to pull the money out of the bank. Uh, there is no money. We'll find ways to pay it.
but again, by, by increasing the taxes and crippling uh, business. I'm a businessman. That's what I did. And you don't need uh, an MBA or be a former CEO to say $100 out, $100 in, you're even. That's not much more to it than that. Somehow the people in Washington think there's no end to this. And what they're doing is threatening the entire social network uh, of the country. Our Social Security, our IRAs, our retirement plans, and we've seen this in other countries around the world. Irresponsible politicians can screw this up to a point where they destroy <coughs> the entire system. The middle class, people who own their own homes, middle income, are in jeopardy of winding up with, with no retirements and other problems as the chickens come home to roost. If a debt hits a certain point, and I don't know what it is, but, but in places like Greece and Argentina and, and, and Russia, the national debt is exceeds the GDP. Ours is only 70% of GDP only. When it gets close to 100, you, you can think of two solutions. Default, uh, Social Security, uh, we're not paying. Or hyperinflation, which is the more likely politically expedient. The Fed turns the tax <coughs> and allows money to uh, uh, flow freely. And the dollar that used to buy uh, a loaf of bread now buys uh, nothing. You need hundred dollars or whatever. So you know, hyperinflation is, is a real danger. And I have no confidence in this administration. I have no confidence in Mr. Uh, uh, Weiner or Mr. Obama or Ms. Pelosi to understand what these problems are and fix them. We've had these problems in our prosperity before, and, and go back to 1984. Easy for me, not so easy for some others. But uh, Ronald Reagan was president. Our national growth was 1.2 percent. Employment was high. It's about 8 percent, not as high as it is now, but still. What did he do? Convinced a Democratic Congress to cut taxes. Cut taxes on. And gave tax credits for research and development, for investment tax credits, for um, uh, other incentives for business and investing to spur economic growth. We went from 1.2% growth to 8 9%. We grew our way out of the problem. We have a nine year growth uh, pattern. We can do that again. We asked President Obama, why, why don't we do that? He said that would, in the interest of fairness, he couldn't do it. And fairness is an odd word. Uh, a socialist might say, well, it's only fair that we can't give capital gains tax taxes to people who already have money, even if it will spur the economy and promote growth. I said, I don't know. I think fairness is something we have in our Constitution the fairness and equality of opportunity. I don't, I'm not buying that notion of fairness, and I hope you don't. We have to get this country moving, and there's a way to do it. We know what the formula is. It's not being followed by, by this administration. And I think it'll spiral us down and, and put us further in the hole. A lot of the problems that happen in Washington keep impacting, goes to the state these unfunded mandates. Washington passes a law that costs a billion dollars. It doesn't say that, as in the health care bill. The state has to take care of that. It's called an unfunded mandate. Well, New York happens to be the uh, punching bag for these unfunded uh, mandates. New York, while our, our congressmen are trying to... I'm just an average man with an average life. I work from nine to five. great state. I wonder who their congressman is. He gets $2.06 back from the federal government. The 9-11 uh, bill or, or the uh, uh, Home Security bill. New York, nada. Who 
Who's fighting for us? This is the number one ter terrorist target in the, in the nation. Something wrong with the whole process, the thinking process. I have uh, a plan, and it's simple. Throw the bums out, get myself elected, stay there for two terms. I want to go to Washington like I want a hole in my head. But somebody's got to do it. We've got to get this job done. I want to go there. I want to join up with about, I think, there'll be 60 or 70 new seats. Some of them will be Democratic conservatives, fiscal conservatives in that group who will say, we are ready for reform. We will change House rules. We don't need a presidential signature on it. We can change the House rules on earmarks and transparency. So, uh, objective number one. And then objective number two, to try and, and defund and hamper this health bill until we can properly fix it in two years and override a presidential veto with a, maybe a new president. Uh, but until that time, it's going to be a very tough slog for the next two years. Without it, I think we will wind up with a socialized medical system in six years or eight years. And I've been to, to London, I've been to Russia, I've been to China. You don't want that system. You don't have to go to Cuba to know. The death rates, the sick rates, everything uh, about it is open and transparent. You can read it. If you socialize medicine, you're going to get this. Our system stinks. But like democracy, as Churchill said, democracy is the worst form of government, except for every other. We've got the worst form of medicine, except for every other. We can do things to fix it. But socializing it, it, it is not going to be the answer. And when it's socialized, that top level of society and the congressmen and the others will find a way to beat the system. They're not going to be waiting in line in a clinic. You'll be waiting in line in a clinic. That's the plan. And that's, according to Mr. Obama, fair. I don't think so. That's my spiel. I urge you, please study this. I have a website. I try and give you a little more depth to some of these issues. I'll be happy to answer any uh, questions. But I think now is the time to act, mobilize, volunteer, and please vote. You throw the bums out, you got my vote. <laughs> I'm just an average man with an average life. I work from